Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In this episode, we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and counting calories. Several years ago, I did an episode on this, and I wanted to circle back around to it because this is something I think about quite often. Uh, because you know, a, a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, how, how many calories a day are you eating? And uh, I always have to tell them. I have no idea, you know, I, I because I don't. I don't count calories. Um, I also don't know how many calories I'm burning every day. But I did do this for a period of time back in 2015. For several weeks, I just counted all of my calories. I started out uh, kind of in a laid back way. I was like, I'm just going to, you know, jot down what I eat. Uh, and that quickly grew into this obsession where, um, you know, the scale wasn't moving down fast enough for me. And I started weighing and measuring all of my food. And I started to feel very restricted and very frustrated because I felt like I was putting in all this effort into counting calories and it just wasn't showing up on the scale. And it seemed like it was kind of hurting my relationship with food because I was becoming so obsessive about this stuff. But in hindsight, I can really see how that short period of time of calorie counting was actually really good for me. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about the benefits and the major drawbacks. And um, we're going to talk about a a possible compromise you can make uh, to derive the benefits, but then also stay away from the negative effects of it. Now, I think the biggest benefit of counting calories, at least for a short period of time, time is that it really opens your eyes to the reality of why gaining weight is just so easy because it's really easy to eat too many calories. And furthermore, we are really bad at estimating how many calories we're consuming. People who are not even obese, who are just going to you know, sit there and say like, oh, well, I think I'm consuming this many calories a day. Scientists have found uh, those people are off by 800 calories a day, while obese people are off by 1300 calories a day. And, and that's a lot of calories. But when you learn how to count your calories, you gain an awareness of how much you're consuming. And once you know these things, you can't unlearn them. You know, like once you realize like, wow, there are a lot of calories in mayonnaise or the, or peanut butter, all these things, you know it. And then you can just more easily be aware that like, okay, when you slather peanut butter on something or when you slather mayonnaise on, on something, it's going to up the calorie count by a lot. And just knowing that is helpful. It can also provide a reality check on, you know, your portion sizes too. When you, when you realize like, oh, okay, this is how many calories I'm eating at this one meal. Uh, It can just show you like, okay, maybe you're putting too much on your plate. But I think the biggest benefit is that it can provide concrete proof that weight loss isn't magic. Now, this is something that's kind of hard for me to describe. But back when I was obese, I kind of thought, you know, like, I know science is real, but I am not eating more than other people are eating. And here I am obese and all these other people are at a normal weight. So it doesn't make sense to me. But through the process of intermittent fasting, I started to kind of understand like, oh, I am eating more than I think I am. You know, I, just because I saw, oh, there's a lot of times where, you know, I'm in the fasting window and I had this urge to go eat. And, and since I'm fasting, I'm not doing that. So I'm eating less. But then adding to that, learning to just to count the calories, like figure out how many calories are at a meal, I started to see like, oh, wow, you know, if, if this is how many calories are in one meal and I was, you know, and, and I used to eat like three or four of these meals a day, uh, then I could see that like, oh, there was just a real concrete reason why I had gained the weight. I was eating too many calories. And when you can really cement that in your head that like, okay, if I'm eating too many calories, the scale is going to go up. And if, and if I'm eating just the right amount of calories, that's when the scale stays, you know, quote unquote, stuck. And when I'm eating uh, too few calories, uh, then the scale goes down. When you can really get that in, in, like in your mind really firm, then it makes everything so much easier. Uh, it can help you to just keep yourself accountable uh, to all of your actions. Otherwise, it can be really easy to deceive yourself and to say, well, I'm not really eating that much. And I'm, you know, but the truth is, if the scale's not moving down, you're simply eating too much. Now, you might be wondering, well, you know, like, okay, if counting calories is so great, then why don't you do it? Well, there are many reasons for that. Uh, 
Number one, uh, there's not a really super accurate way to find out how many calories you're burning on a day-to-day basis. Now, yes, you can use a calculator and you can get a rough idea of it, but we have uh, you know different activity levels from day to day. And on top of that, uh, there are things that we do throughout the day that can affect that in a major way. Our, you know, our tendency to fidget or not can make a huge difference in how many calories we burn. Now, on top of that, it is very hard to know exactly how many calories you are consuming, even if you are weighing and measuring all of your food. Even in prepackaged food, the FDA allows for a 20% margin of error. So in other words, you know, that one thing that you think maybe contains 500 calories actually contains 600 calories. And on top of that, even something simple like a slice of pepperoni pizza can vary wildly based on what ingredients are used. And good luck figuring that out. If it's just, you know, a thing where you're going to a local restaurant, um, a mom and pop kind of shop, they're probably not going to have the calorie counts available. So, you know, you may have a slice of pizza that's 180 calories or you might be consuming 620 calories. It's really hard to know. Even if you go to somewhere like Pizza Hut, which has all their calorie counts on their menu, it will say there are 480 calories in one slice of meat lover's pizza. But that doesn't take into account the fact that the person making the pizza maybe was a little heavy handed with the pepperoni and the sausage, which maybe will make it taste delicious, but it will have more calories. And it's even worse when you are just making stuff from scratch from a recipe, because most of the time you're not going to have those calorie counts available. And that means you have to take that recipe, put it into a website and find out, you know, how many calories are in the whole thing, then divide that out by how many portions you think there are, and you have to stick to that portion size. It is a tedious thing to do. And what really stinks about all this is that since it's so much easier to count calories when it's prepackaged, you you may have this tendency to want to just eat more prepackaged food just out of ease. But those foods are engineered to the bliss point, which means you know that these food engineers are making it so that it's very pleasurable to eat these foods. It's very hard to stop. So it can create an even worse problem than you were dealing with before. So what are you supposed to do with all this conflicting information? I think the best way to look at calorie counting is just as getting a baseline education in how many calories are in food generally. And this doesn't need to be a long-term thing. I think the the main way you're going to benefit from this is if you currently think you're not eating very many calories, just counting your calories for a week or so can really open your eyes up to things. It doesn't need to be something that you do for the long term. I think actually, you know, it's really hard to do this for the long term because in order to be accurate, you have to be so obsessive really about every single bite that goes into your mouth. And, and, and that's not a very fun way to live. So how do you do this? If you are actually wanting to count calories for a while, uh, I think, first of all, to remember that this is not an exact science. You know, you don't have a metabolic chamber (laughs) that you can go into and and measure how many calories you're burning. And you're even with, uh, you know, the uh, food labels uh, that you have available to you, uh, you're still going to be guessing on some level because you don't know for sure that they're dead on accurate. So if you can just go into it with with those expectations that, okay, this isn't going to be an exact science, but it can just give me an overview of how much I'm eating. Uh, Uh, then I think then you'll derive the most benefit from it. And of course, the most accurate way to do this is to weigh and measure all of your food. Um, and again, you know, do, is that something you should do for the long term? I think it's it's not a good idea. I think I think most people would feel really restricted by that. And again, you know, it, it's just not really practical. But if you do that for even just one or two meals, just showing yourself like, OK, this is how much peanut butter is in one serving, you know, and you just measure that out. Uh, it it can help you. It can help you to understand uh, how quickly these things add up. And of course, there are apps, you know, things like MyFitnessPal, uh, Fitbit also has a calorie counting uh, feature where you can just log the food. And they do have a database that you can go in to and you can, you know, pick uh, what you're eating. Again, you know, if you do a lot of homemade stuff, it's going to be harder. <laughs> um, and if you do a lot of, you know, uh, things more like just whole pieces of meat, that's also going to be difficult because the fat content varies widely um, and it really just depends 
depends on the piece that you have. Now, here's one more thing to keep in mind. Okay, so maybe you're going to, you know, uh, count your calories and, and then you start counting your calories and you, you get in your head, okay, like this is how many calories I need. Um, but here's the thing that happens. As you lose weight, you need fewer calories. So that means that, you know, like after you've lost a certain amount of weight, if you keep with that same calorie count, uh, you're not going to lose any more weight. So um, and then a- another thing that happens, too, which is, I know, frustrating, uh, your body is always trying to compensate for if you eat fewer calories. So, um, because your body is always trying to conserve energy and it's trying to keep the fat on your body because it's trying to help you to survive for as long as possible. And fact is your body can survive being overweight and even obese for a lot longer than if it goes too far in the other direction. Being underweight, uh, is, is uh, much more critical, uh, because you don't have anything to, to fall back on. Like if you go without food for a while, if you have no fat stores, you're in, you're in big trouble, you'll die. But on the other hand, if you've got some fat stores, you know, even during times of famine, you can last longer. Uh, so your body is always, you know, trying to err on the side of keeping you alive longer. So what does it do? You know, you, you cut your calories, um, as far as how many you're eating, and then it will, you know, want to move less, <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll want to, uh, be a bit more sedentary. Uh, here's something interesting. Uh, scientists have found that you can, that you'll even blink slower, uh, t- in order to try to, to, to compensate for, for the lower amount of calories that you're consuming. So you have to err, uh, kind of like on the side of just doing more activity than you feel like doing and um, eating a little less than you feel like eating. So right now, if you're in that kind of place where you are doing intermittent fasting and you're just not having results with it, I would offer to you, you know, a week of just counting calories or maybe not even a week, just a day. You know, if you if you just and you can even try it in hindsight, although I will say it is really hard to remember everything that you ate from the day before. Uh, But that is one thing to try. Now, like I said, it can quickly become an obsessive kind of thing. And and maybe just the idea of even measuring it, you think, oh, that's too stressful. I don't want to do that. One way to find out about how many calories you're eating is to think about uh, when you go out to eat a meal that you normally eat. And then you can look that up and figure out how many calories are in it. So let's say that you know that, okay, you like to go to Olive Garden and you like to order the Tour of Italy. And that when you order that, you you eat the whole thing. Then what you can do is you can go online and look up how many calories are in the Tour of Italy. And in case you're wondering, there are 1,520 calories, which is delicious, by the way. And so if you do that for a couple of different meals, that can kind of give you an idea of about how much you're eating per sitting. And that can give you an idea about of about how much you're eating uh, every day. But if you do that and it looks like you're not eating very much, I would challenge you that it's then a good idea to just write down everything you eat during the course of the day, uh, because there are quite likely going to be like snacks or little bites here and there that are adding up. And don't forget to count beverages. (laughs) A large Coke at McDonald's, for example, has 380 calories, whereas a Starbucks Venti Caramel Frappuccino has 510 calories. And this is why I love intermittent fasting so much, because it helps you to more easily eat the right amount of calories. What I found for myself was just going based on feel. So in other words, you know, sitting down and eating what I thought was the right amount and then paying attention to, in hindsight, do I feel like I ate too much or too little? And then making sure that every day I was feeling, you know, like, okay, I feel like I burned through my calories. I feel at at the point at which I'm going to eat, I do feel like I need to eat. In other words, that I did deplete uh, the calories that I had in me. When I did all those things, the weight loss did happen without needing to count calories. Certainly counting calories is not required when you're intermittent fasting. But if you're having trouble, I'd recommend it at least for a few days. And I think you'll find that, you know, if you if you have the appropriate attitude about it, meaning, you know, you're just trying to learn and you understand that it's not going to be an exact science, that it can really help. Thank you for joining me in this podcast episode and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes.
And if you've gotten value from this podcast and you'd like to let other people know about it, it'd be great if you could leave a review on either iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks.